Hi everyone, this is Tammy at Snowstorm Crafts and welcome. So I've had one of those busy weeks where I got a huge order from Etsy for my uh, gift rainbow. It's my rainbow gift bags that I make. And um, so I just been super busy. Plus my mother-in-law's 70th birthday was this week. And we all went out to an awesome restaurant where you could sit outside and then we have the huge Willamette River out there. And I got video and footage of it. So uh, I'll make sure to put that on after this. And it's pretty cool. I mean, it's a huge river that runs right there along it. And we had uh, grandkids, aunts, uncles, everybody was there. So we all decided to go to like an arcade, like a fun, just arcade thing. And um, I did some video there. So I'll, I'll make sure to pop that in and you guys can check it out. It's really fun. Just quick snippets. But today what we're, we're going to be working on is a needle book. So I'm going to show you guys how I construct it and piece it together. So let's get started and I'll show you guys. I'm going to do a quick footage of hanging my bags hanging. And I'll show you guys what they look like and uh, I'll meet you at the table. So I just want to show you guys real quick. Uh, those are the ones that are hanging. That's just like half the order right now that um, that I just did yesterday. I went ahead and dyed them and hung them up. Uh, but yeah, that's why I just want to show you guys. I've been super busy. But this is what they are. Uh, like I said, I don't know if I said at the beginning, but I actually buy the, it's lycra cotton and I buy it in bulk. And I hand cut it, sew it hand dye it, and then add in the drawstrings here. But the cool thing about them is they're stretchy. And these are just so much fun. They're great for Easter too. Like you can put your, you know, all kinds of Easter goodies and stuff in them. And they're just fun. They're just my little rainbow bags. But I just want to show you guys, I have different sizes and everything, but uh, yeah. So I did a short on this and doing the whole packaging of this and everything. And I'll put the link down below if you guys just want to come watch the little fun short. But yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you guys real quick. Because that has been what I've been engulfed in for the last couple days. But today we are going to make a needle book. So I've been promising you guys, I'm going to make a needle book with you. I'm going to make a needle book. Well, today's the day. And what we got here is, I'll show you guys this one real quick. So there will be a couple of videos that I'm going to put on the end screen. So you guys can come check out how I did certain things. But you do not have to do it exactly the way I did it. I mean, uh, and I'll talk to you about that more. Okay, so this is my little book. I'm just gonna show you the gist of it here. Oops, I got my hair all over it. Okay, so we got pockets in the front. What did I have in here? Oh, I was writing down the needles. I wrote down like what needles are where. So these are the quilting needles, size nine applique sharps which is size nine and then the second page so it's kind of nice if you want to know like say you take them out of your container and stuff of what needle says what you could just have like a little page that you tuck into the front little pocket here and uh milliner's needle three and nine is what this is okay and then the third page is milliner's size three is what that one is and then the last one well is safety pens of course and then miscellaneous 
So it's kind of nice to have just like a little key, little key thing in here. Cause then, cause I would forget. I take them out of the needle casing. I'm like, uh, I don't know. I don't remember. So it's kind of just like a little key for me to, to see what I got here. But I did buttons just for decorative. You could do a little lace glue down. You could do fabric. Like you have some fun fabric hanging around. You could do just some fussy cutting around it and stitch that onto a page. Did that here too. And then another little pocket in the back, which is just a little thimble. And I think that's all I put in there. I think I had this in there too at one point. I had that in there and then I had my little threads for the middle here. So I'll show you guys how we do the middle to make it wide enough where you could stick some thread in the middle like that, okay? All right, so let's get started and I'll talk you guys through this here. But it is wide enough to be able to put some stuff like that in it. Okay, so these are great just to, you know, travel with and you know, sit out by your chair, your comfy, comfy spot, watch TV with it, or take it to the doctor's office, or uh, just anything you're traveling around. It's nice to have. Okay, so we're going to start off with, and this is when the videos come in, but like I said, you guys can just do it with whatever fabrics and stuff you have. So what I have is my lovebirds, and I don't know if you guys have seen those videos, but to make my lovebirds, I will put the video on the end screen. So at the very end of this video, there's videos that pop up and it'll be lovebirds that you can come see how I made those. I made it out of some denim and I show you guys the process of the nest and everything. So there's that. Also, I show you guys for the background here, it's three different, uh, three different stitches you can do for patchwork. So I'll make sure to put that on the end screen and then you guys come check you know, that out. Just if you want to construct it the exact same way. But today I'm just going to use this one because it's already ready to go and I want to make this a needle book. I think it's super fun. And I'll tell you the measurements, which is five, six, seven, eight long by one, two, three, four, five, four and three fourths pretty much or five depends because it's a little taller it's a little wonky I don't cut straight I usually take it snip it and rip it to to do things so that's about the measurements is eight by five roughly okay so we got those and we got our little pockets these are just some slow stitch that I did just for fun. I mean, it's just, you know, some coffee dyed fabrics, linen, cotton, uh, different things like that. And I just did some stitching. I just did a running stitch, some plus and X's and uh, took some more fabric and fanned it and then just did some stitching on it. So whatever you got, you know, you could just stitch some stuff together or you can just take fabric and just cut it to size and put it on for a pocket. Okay. So you got that. And then I just got my needles. And I just got uh, just the DMC threads, just regular threads. Probably gonna use just two strands. It's pretty much what I use. And just regular felt, just normal felt. So I just got some scrap felt here that'll be cut into a page. And I think that's all we need. So let's get started. So I went ahead and I just got just my threads and my needle here, just ready to go. And it doesn't matter what color you use. I mean, it's up to you what color you use on your you know, little needle book, but I have no specific color because I have so many different colors that I think it'll look nice either way. So I'm going ahead and I'm using like this gray blue, like a steel blue, not sure, it's like a blue family. <laughs> and I went ahead and just cut out my felt just where it's just a little bit on the inside here so what a quarter inch all the way around however you want to do it so i think that'll fit nicely like that okay 
and so we got that cut to size now before we add our pockets in now you could do you can go ahead and do a background uh cover on there if you want to I'm trying to see i think i did yeah i went ahead and did that on it on this one so you can go ahead and just add like a pretty you know fabric or anything like that on the background of that if you want to but i think i'm just going to keep it the way it is but what i have here is um i show you guys how to make fabric twine in a video and i'll make sure to put that on the end screen so this is just kind of some fun things if you guys want to do what exactly what i'm doing i actually have some videos that you can come check out but this is what i'm going to use for the closure and I'm just deciding which one I want to use. I got this one and I got this one. I'm leaning towards the green. And then I can always add just some little beads and little things at the end of it here. But I think the green will go the best. Okay, so I'll save that one. Hold it in half. But Snip, and I'll tell you how long it is. One, two, three, four, five. Twelve. So it's twelve inches long, but you could do yours as long as you want. We're gonna go ahead and stick it in a little bit, at least an inch. So that's how it'll go. And then you just take your whatever pocket you want to use. Now what you could do is you can either cut it in half and just go ahead and just use the half you know to put on or you could fold it in half you know for more stability and then you can have where the fold is on the outside so either way you want to do it but i don't want to waste the prettiness of this so i'm going to go ahead and just cut it in half i think it's going to still hold together nicely i'll just make sure to cut it not cutting threads off you know where the thread will come undone i think i'll be able to do that we'll see i might cut right in the middle of that one huh yeah i did it okay so what you could do though is you could take some um, tacky glue or white glue or something like that and then you can just take it and see if my glue is going to work work but you could just take it and um just pop a little bit of glue down there maybe that'll work oh there we go so if you just pop a little bit of white glue or something like that it'll just make it so it's not gonna pull through I think my needle's a little rusty. I need to get rust, rust, wet, rust free needles, and then it won't do that to your glue. Oh, just make sure it's stuck down. Okay. Now, I'm gonna put one here and one over here for our pockets. I think I want like that where the frayed edge is out. So we're just going to start off with putting our little closure in about an inch. Just on top, like that. And you can take your pin or your clips. I should have some clips here somewhere. Oh, Look around, you can find a clip. So that's where I want it. I'll go ahead and just clip it into place. Okay. And then I'll do the same over here. So you can line up your closures. Just close your book, go like that. And do I have another? <laughs> I looked out, found that clip. I'll get that on another one. Never know. Just look around your craft room. Never know what you're gonna find. Okay. 
There we go. And then we're just going to take it and do a running stitch. As easy as that. I'm just going to pop my... Which I'm really not concerned about not showing. Because we all know that the... And if you don't know, I will tell you. That uh, slow stitching is not supposed to be perfect. The point of slow stitching is to just kind of get into a meditative state or a relaxed state. You know, it helps with anxiety. It helps with your blood pressure lowering. It helps with all kinds of stuff. I mean, really, if you just sit there and you know, talk with friends like I'm doing now or watch your favorite TV program or, you know, when you're in the doctor's office and it's nerve wracking to go to the doctor. Oh, look, I just did a whip stitch there. But you know what? I'm going to keep it. Uh, you know, and just where you're nervous to do something or, you know, because I, I really don't like getting out and going to the doctor. I mean, I don't know if anybody else does, especially the dentist. Whew. We don't even talk about that. But uh, so if you could like just relax and just get out your slow stitch and maybe just uh, it helps your anxious, anxious mind focus on something else. And it really, really does help. So that is the point for me for slow stitching is to kind of get out of my head for a little bit, you know, with all the everyday hubbub, you know, that is just going on and stuff. Now I'm making sure to stitch through the middle of this just to attach it down, just right through the twine right there. Let's see. So you can even do that a couple times. Like you can go back this way. And then you can also couch over it too, which is going on either side if you want to do that. But just make sure to pin, get into the middle too. Take a bite out of the middle. But you don't want this coming undone. This is where most of the tension is going to be because you're opening and closing it. So if you want, you can just do that a couple of times. I'm just popping through the middle. <clears throat> and being that it's hand stitched, um, it's not going to go anywhere. I mean, it's secure. So if you go through there at least two to three times and just stitch it down really good, it should work out. I mean, it will work out. <laughs> Why do we doubt ourselves? So, uh, but yeah, that's that's how I think of slow stitching. is uh, not about perfection, you know. You kind of just have an idea in mind and just go with it, really. Oh, well, that kind of came undone, but that's okay. I can either cut that or glue it down. Uh, yeah, I'm really just enjoying the process of it all. And I just keep thinking of fun little projects and stuff. So if you guys are enjoying my slow stitch series here that I've been working on, uh, let me know. I mean, comment down below. Let me know if this is the right path I'm going on. I mean, because I still do junk journaling, of course. You know, I... Uh, throw in some stuff here and there with the, you know, paper and doing different things. And uh, the other, I did uh, like an arty label uh, video the other day, and I think that turned out really fun too. Uh, just, I mean, if you guys just go to my channel and look through, I got tons of videos of uh, just basically the junk journal right i did a lot of just just focused on just junk journaling but now i'm kind of you know going over towards stitching a little bit and i am still doing junk journaling i'm throwing that in of course I, that is i really love junk journaling and um i just think it's fun to kind of veer and take a little bit of different paths here and there so let me know let me know if you guys are enjoying the stitch uh series here I really am having fun doing this with you guys. Okay, so I'm just tying this off. Whatever you want. Okay. So you guys see what I did. I just started at the top here and worked my way and left this open for a pocket. A little pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side. But there we go. We got our little closure. A good start to our needle book here and I will meet up with you guys after I do this pocket. Alright, 
so I got it all done like that. I don't think it's going anywhere. We got two little pockets. Now I want to show you guys if you didn't want to put these inside here because you think it's gonna mess with putting stuff in there, which I don't think it will, but uh, just in case. You could, I just did this on the outside on this one because I forgot to put them in underneath. So I just sewed it on top. Let's see right here on this one better. So I just sewed it right on top instead of putting it inside the pocket. So there's, you know, a couple ways you could do that for sure. Okay, so now, ooh, throwing things around. What we could do is you can decorate your pages before you put them in, or you could do it after it's in the book. But I think let's just go ahead and do some decorating here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut out a couple of flowers just because I think this fits really nicely with the whole theme we got going here. So I'm going to go through and just find some flowers and cut some out and gather up some buttons. And what was the other thing I have? Uh, oh, lace. We'll get some lace if you could, just, just for decorative because after you put your buttons in, like say you sew some buttons right here, on the back, you'll be able to see like the knots. So it's nice to just glue down a piece of lace or something on top of it. So let me gra grab all that stuff and we'll get to work. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out off uh, camera and I'll be back. So I went ahead and sewed my buttons down and you can see on the back here, it looks like that. And what I did is this is just an end cut from um, some fabric that I did, dyed. And um, then I just went ahead and just did some like little star shapes on there. I just did a cross across and then just kept crossing over like that. So I just did some decorative stitches on it. We can go ahead and pop this down to hide everything. Now, if you don't want it to show through onto the other side with stitching it down, you can either just go through just because it is felt, you could just pop through the little layers there, or you could just take some uh, tacky glue or Faber, Faber Fix glue or something like that and glue it down. That's an option. I think that's what I did in the other journal. This one or the little needle book. I just went ahead and glued it down so it wouldn't interfere with this side over here. But you can also, so I have six strands here because I wanted that to be thick, but I just went ahead and just kept it attached. Make sure you cover up everything that you want covered up. And I'm just gonna grab just a pinch on the top there. I'm not going all the way through. I'm just going to do a running stitch. Not to go all the way through. If it peeks through a little bit, it won't be too bad. It'll be okay. But I'm trying to make it so it's not going to go through. Having a little bite of the uh, felt. It through. You don't have to do the six strands like I have right now. Uh -huh.
So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it just like that. It kind of got knotted right there, so it's not going anywhere, but I don't mind it. I'm just going to keep it like that. I think that turned out really good. Well, there. You can do it without poking all the way through to the other side. That is definitely a way to do it. Okay, so now I cut out a flower. I'm going to put one here. And then probably later on, I'll put another one back here. But just for now, I'll show you guys how. Same concept as I did here. And I'm just going to not go all the way through to the other side. And if I do go through to the other side, I can always just cover it up with another flower. Or cover it up with a button, or, I mean, you can just do all kinds of stuff just to kind of hide if you, you know, accidentally pop through like that a little bit and it bothers you. Just, uh, you can find something to cover it up with. This is just supposed to be fun and, you know, make your own little needle book add all your fun things to and you're ready to stitch anywhere you'll be portable Some fun little pages here. You can see some of it did go through, but I will go ahead and I'll add another uh, flower to the back here. Okay, so I went ahead and just did a little sewing back here and got that on there. It turned out cute. So now, what we need to do is go ahead and sew this in. Set it where you want it. The little clips. so it doesn't slide around on us. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to take my glue here. I'll show you. I'm just going to go ahead and do three stitches down the spine. One, two, three. Just running stitches all the way down. And just to get it flat and then it's easy to put uh, some of the bigger things that you want in there like your uh, threads and different things like that. So just I'm going to start in the middle. It does not need to be perfect so I mean if you want you could go like this. Kind of put your finger here and pinch and go, okay, that's about the middle. That. So we'll just pop up underneath the knot hidden. Okay. And just do a running stitch. Just make sure you're going all the way out and you're not catching your closure. <laughs> just make sure you're going all the way out and then popping back up. And I can feel the needle all the way out and then just pop back up. And like I said, this doesn't need to be perfect stitches because I think wonk the wonkier the better. They look great when they're all just 
any which way. Do a little character. This one up. Right back down. That. And I got a really long piece of thread on purpose. And then I'm not going to even worry about the outside or nothing. I'm just going to pop over just about a quarter of an inch. However you want to do it. And so getting this flattened down and then it's easy to put stuff in it. That's not going to be a long enough thread, so I'm just going to go ahead and just tie it off here. Cut it. I already have another one ready to go. Nope, not that one. That's all. And then I'm just going to go on the other side of the middle. And if you want, because it is a little thicker, you can see. I mean, I should probably put my. Oh, I have it. Just put it in my little pocket. So, because I tend to use my middle finger to push it through. A little bit of thimble. On. I just don't tend to use thimbles because they get kind of caught up in, in my way. But <clears throat> every once in a while, I'm like, oh, maybe I do need a thimble. So, like if you're noticing it, I'm getting kind of thick. You know, you can pop one on, but I always feel because I can't feel the needle. I don't tend to use them that much, but that definitely is an option. Okay. So now I'm just going to take this off. There we go. Got ourselves a stitch journal here. Or not a stitch journal, a needle book. <laughs> it's a needle book. And now you can see you got more room to put your threads. Here, you can even do a bigger one here. Thread there. And it closes up nicely. I've got lots of room. So it's just, if you want, you know, more things in the middle right there just to store things, I think it works out great. So you could do that. Your little scissors, pop those into the pocket. Okay, so you could do scissors in there, you could take your threads, pop those in there, your other pocket, put your little thimble in there, and of course, you know, your needles throughout. And everything like that. Like that. And then of course your little key if you need to know what needles are where. So I think this turned out really fun. And here's a needle threader that can go into your little pocket. Those are always handy to have. So yeah, so I'm thinking I'm going to put considering putting this one in. I just don't know if it has the needle marks in it. So I'm considering putting in this journal into my Etsy shop. The one we just made today. I think this one will be fun. And it, <clears throat> excuse me, the link will be down below. And I got tons of process videos on how I did all this, even the roses and everything on here. So I think this one will be fun in my Etsy shop. Uh, it won't come with needles or anything like that or any scissors or anything. So it'll be, you know, you provide your own stuff for it. But 
it's all stitched and has pockets and ready to go. So I'm going to put this one into my Etsy shop. Uh, so on this one, I just uh, stamped the word stitch onto a piece of coffee dyed fabric. I just did some stamping and then I, I stitched it out. So that's definitely an option you can do. And uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informational. And if you could please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and you guys can see my next video when I post it. Like, comment, and share, and let's grow together. And keep on crafting. <laughs>